It's like a scene in the Titanic, bro. I'd let go, bounce. See you later. Fuck this. Today, I know this setup looks intimidating. I've got scallops, I've got a whole load of chilies. There's some ingredients we might not have seen before, but we're going to make a scallop chili oil-ish thing with some greens. It's going to be delicious. So let me do a little run through of the dish. Now, in order to get the flavor and the depth into our chili sauce, the first thing we're going to want to do is flavor our oil. So I've got 600 milliliters of neutral oil, sunflower, peanut, vegetable, no, no olive oil, nothing with flavor. And then here I have one cinnamon bark. Now this oil's cold and we're gonna bring it up. So we're, we're, we're almost like making a tea. We want all of our flavors to bleed out and extract. So in with our cinnamon, I've got the rind of one orange. I've just done this with a peeler. That goes in. We have these little star anise. Little aniseed bad boys. I've got one, two, three, four of those. And then the rest is just a tablespoon job, cumin, a tablespoon coriander seeds, a tablespoon fennel, and a tablespoon of some dried, a tablespoon of some dried Chinese chilies. Now, cold oil. They're gonna be reserved for the summer. Right, so due to the weather, uh, I've had to fuck my little camping stove off. It's not coping. We've moved on to the big boy. Medium heat, let it do its thing. And then we're just gonna tip these. So our aromats are in our oil. I have five white parts of spring onion. That goes in. And here we have eight little Asian shallots. Now, if you can't find these shallots, use normal banana shallots, maybe go to if not, worst case scenario, cut up one onion, stick it in. So this all goes in. That's all just gonna sit in there, get to know each other, slowly come up, we're gonna brew it like a tea. Now, we're gonna move on to what's going into this oil. So, on this tray of intimidating amounts of chili, these are our ingredients for our chili sauce. So what I have here is four spring onions, 80 grams of garlic, 70 grams of Thai chili, 100 grams of Thai green chili, 60 grams of fingerling chilies, and then I had these everyday chilies knocking about in the fridge, and I'm going with five of those. So what we're gonna do, essentially, is cut this until we can't take it anymore. You could do this in a blender. I prefer to do it by hand and just make sure that everything's uniform and it all cooks the same. So I'm just gonna start chopping. Right, so with these chilies, right, I'm not gonna bother taking the seeds out of any of them. And I know it looks like an intimidating amount of chili and you're thinking, right, this is gonna be mad hot. But once you've cooked it down, it's got all the aromats in it and the other flavors, it does balance out. So it's not as intense as you think it's gonna be. I cut my hand up. I sharpened my knife yesterday. What is it, a Daffy Duck pasta? Big up, big up Donald Duck each and every time. Um, safety first always, ladies and gentlemen. Don't want to cook with bloody hands. Finger little, little finger bandage. Sick. Right, back to being hard bodied, you get me? But yeah, make sure your knives are sharp and make sure you keep your fingers tucked back. Are these my hands? Because I can't feel them. <laughs> it feels like someone else is doing the chopping, bro. I think it's minus one today. I mean, my jacket's keeping me warm, I, I, like, but everything else that's exposed, ankles, my nose, the tips of my fingers. I've got a nice pair of thermal socks on as well, colorful thermal socks. Right, so I've sliced all of those chilies into a round, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna cross chop just like run our knives over until they're nice and small. And we're gonna do the same with our garlic and the same with our ginger. The, the benefits of doing this with a knife is that we haven't bruised our chilies. We haven't lost all of our juices and the good stuff into the board. 
If you blitz this in a blitzer, it will turn into a watery, slushy paste. All vegetables contain a certain amount of water and by bruising them and running them around in a RoboCoop or in a, in a blender, you're allowing those waters to escape. And if we're going into oil with watery chili, it's not really gonna work. So, it's Sunday morning, you've got nothing else to do, just chop some chilies up. Oh, that's a good shot. Thank you, son. Thank you. Chilies are chopped. We're gonna do the same thing with our garlic and our ginger. I've just realized that I've left this thumb-sized piece of ginger out. This was supposed to go into here. It's not too late. I'm just gonna slice this, just down like that. And it's gonna go into our oil. It's just 45 grams. We all make mistakes. So then it goes. Let it do its thing. Chili, garlic, chopped. Put it to one side. I don't want to see it right now. Spring onions. I have four spring onions. Gonna take off the greens. So the reason that I'm cooking this dish is I was in bed at like 2 a.m. Uh, searching Instagram as I normally do, looking at video recipes and stuff. And I came across this video of a Asian man cooking by a river, just chopping a whole load of bits, um, just chopping up garlic and chilies and spring onions and all the other stuff. And then the, the satisfaction on the man's face after he'd eaten the entire dish, I was like, I want to be that satisfied. I want to know what this guy's eating. So I kind of guessed the recipe. I saw the ingredients he was using and went into development mode and was like, what would this taste like if I made it? Finally got to a point where I was happy with it. And then the day that I made it, I served it on top of some prawns. Um, but for the next two weeks where it was sat in the cupboard, it was over rice, over eggs, in a sandwich. It was one of those multi-purpose sauces that I was happy that I'd found, developed, and knew how to make. So hopefully you guys make this at home as well, and you can tell me what you've put it on. You can put it on a cheese sandwich. You can put it on fried eggs. You can put it on your girl. Do what you want with it, innit? But it's a, it's a banger still. We want everything to be quite a uniform size. Now, if everything's a uniform size when it goes into the pan, it all cooks at the same time. All right, so that's the spring onion, done. Now, realistically speaking, I've probably been chopping away for about 15 minutes. Our oil's come up. Um, let's have a little check, see if we've got color. The back garden, although we're outside, is starting to smell quite aromatic. So let's have a little gander. Our spices are starting to take on color. So it might look like just a chili and garlic oil, but what we've done is we've created like this flavor bomb of underlying flavor that you're, you're not seeing visually, but once you eat it, you get in, you're like, oh, what's that secret herb? What's this, what's that? Knowledge is power, my friend, knowledge is power. I've chopped all my stuff up. My oil needs a little bit longer. We've probably been out here for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna give it another 10, so I'm gonna pack down and we're gonna move on to prepping these bad boys. Bruv, my feet are so fucking cold. I was like, oh yeah, I'll put on thermal socks, I'll be fine. Fucking hell, bruv. Do you wanna see how cold it is outside? Come here. Come here, I'll show you how cold it is outside. Big man. It's how cold it is, there's icicles, bro. The grind never sleeps, ladies and gentlemen. Right, listen, I know this looks dark, yeah? But we're not like deep frying it, it's slowly steeping. We're bleeding the flavors out. Now at this point, my oil's come up to smoking point almost, right? And this is still on a low heat. I'm gonna take it off, we're gonna strain it, and then we're gonna cook all of our chopped bits in this flavored oil. But it doesn't smell burnt, does it? George is shaking his head. He's saying, no, it doesn't smell burnt. It looks burnt. It's a good one, trust me. Right, so, my oil's hot, yeah? We're gonna go in with our chili and garlic and our spring onions first, and we're gonna give these a gentle little fry, right? Gonna go with our spring onion too. And as soon as that chili and garlic hits that oil, the flavors, the smells again change. We're just gonna fry this gently, medium heat. We don't wanna deep fry it. We want slow little casual bubbles. Now, like anything, when you're frying or if it's in oil, don't take your eye off it. Be vigilant 
and know that at any split second, if this heat gets too hot, if the oil gets too hot, we can end up with absolute shite. Scallop, the star of the show. The little sweet mussel from the bottom of the sea. I'm gonna teach you how to take these out of their shell. And I know you're thinking, rah, these are mad bougie. I can't afford scallops. I got these from Bethnal Green Fish. These are the, the large variety. And I think they were 250 a unit. So yes, they're a bit on the pricey side. I'm not telling you to eat like this every day of the week, but that's cost us pennies, man. Chilies, garlic, some oil, some aromats, things that you should have in your store cupboard anyway. So we're gonna push the boat out a little bit on some top quality British produce. I'm gonna take a spatula. I'm gonna use this scallop as an example. It's already semi-open, right? It's still alive. But as you can see, the scallop sits in its own curved shell. We want flat side. We're gonna run our palette knife down the flat side and release the muscle from the bottom end of the shell, right? In order to do this, I have to turn it and look at it because I'm not like a pro yet. All right, so I'm just gonna scrape this skirt down. And then as you can see here, look, this here is the scallop attached to its shell, yeah? Now I'm just gonna gently nudge it away from its shell, right? Like that, and it opens up, yeah? This scallop, caught today, super fresh, still moving. Now, what we're gonna do is with a spoon, we're gonna do the same and we're gonna scrape the scallop away, yeah? So I'm just scraping my spoon down, making sure that it's no longer attached to its shell. And then at this point, I'm gonna turn it out into a colander. Just like that. So look, as I'm doing this, I'm making sure that I'm always in contact with the shell. Look at that beauty, man. Absolute beauty. So obviously you can get your fishmonger to do this for you, but the more you know, the more you can do. Also, if you're ever stranded on a desert island, right, and you find a scallop, Oh, has taught me how to take these out of the shell. You can also eat these raw when they're this fresh. Little ceviche, tartar. To think this is just in the sea, minding its own business and how sweet and how flavoursome they are. They were put here for us to eat, bro. Like, they're definitely put here for us to eat. Scallops are out of their shell. Now, in some restaurants, you get them served with the coral, this bit, right? I don't like it. Um, I feel that they, they're really spongy and also it's hard to cook a scallop beautifully and get the cooking of the roe right as well. So we're gonna leave that bit out. Now, to clean a scallop, I'm gonna tuck my finger underneath all of this, right? So look, my thumb's gone entire the way through. And I'm just gonna peel it away like so. And there you have one scallop. This stuff you can't really do much with. Um, it's a shame really, but it is what it is. So look, you wanna find this little joint, peel it away, get right underneath it, and then now with your thumb, just poke straight through and roll it around. And you slowly peel away. We don't want to break the scallop at any point. Just got a little bit of tissue. I'm going to take each scallop. Don't want to leave it in the water for too long. Normally I'd rinse these under a tap, but I don't have a tap out here. Just give them a quick dump. Make sure they're clean. Get off any extra bits, any frilly bits that are still attached from the insides, get rid of. This one's still got a bit of membrane on. Just gonna peel that away. Just makes the scallops tight as you cook them. So I've peeled it off. So look, whilst we're having a lesson in taking scallops out of shells, our chili, garlic and spring onion mix has started to cook down. They've sweetened, they fried off ever so slightly. Now we're gonna move into the finishing stages of this oil. So what we need is three tablespoons of good oyster sauce. When I say good oyster sauce, I always go for a Thai brand of oyster sauce. So the better quality it is, the less salty they are, the less things they've had to put in. So that's three tablespoons of oyster. Right, so that oyster sauce is gonna give us like a salty background flavor. Just let that fry off. 
And then we're gonna go two tablespoons of soy. We're gonna go with a little bit of controversy, some MSG. Now, MSG's got a bad rap. People are like, oh, it's artificial. I don't care. MSG for me gives you a, a background, a depth, a satisfaction level that you don't really get from anything else. So I'm gonna go a tablespoon of MSG. We're just gonna let this fry off a little longer. I'm just gonna give it a little taste. Boy, I've got heat, I've got salt, I've got like herby bits back here, like I've got cumin, I've got fennel, I've got coriander seeds. It's fried off, it's done its thing. The last thing we need to do now is add three tablespoons of sesame seeds. We're just gonna let these fry off. That's it, everything's in there, we've seasoned it, we've put everything in where we need to. It's at a quite high fry now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it off the heat and leave it, and it will slowly steep again once it comes down. Now that's a lot of sauce, right? So there's no point of us doing a really small batch just for this one dish. Make that amount, keep it, as long as it's under oil in your fridge, it'll last for two to three weeks. Put it on whatever you want, thank me later. Now, it's time for the star of the show, Mr. Scallop, and I'm gonna teach you how to cook a scallop properly. Scallops, have two sides, right? They have the side that lays flat on the shell and the side that sits on the top. The flat side is the side that we want to cook first, yeah? So the side that's oblong and elongated is the side that goes on to the hot pan, right? That's our presentation side, as we'd call in restaurants. Now, we don't want to season our scallops too early. We literally want to season and go into the pan. As soon as salt touches these scallops, it's going to start to draw the moisture out. It's going to start to preserve them. Let our pan come up to heat. I've only got a tiny splash of oil in here. Nothing major. I'm gonna go in with a sprinkling of salt. Just like so. And I'm gonna stand up for this. It's actually fucking snowing, bro. It's just started to snow, yeah? But I've decided to stand up for this bit because I want these scallops to have my full attention. There's no bits and bobs fucking about. It's scallop into the pan. We need to cook it cook it perfectly and get it out. The longer it sits in there, the more it becomes rubbery and shitty. Some poor man yesterday dove into the freezing sea in order to get these scallops. And we need to do that man justice, yeah? So look, pan's hot. First scallop. Down. That's 12. And as soon as you cook, as soon as a scallop hits the, hits the pan, you get that smell of like roasting lobster shells, roasting crab shells, that sweetness. So my scallops are in. I'm just gonna season the top side as well. And now I'm not gonna touch them. As much as you wanna touch them, don't touch them. Please, just don't, don't touch it. It's not worth it. It's in, wherever it's landed, that's where it's staying, yeah? Got a nice little gold crust. This is our sugars caramelizing. Let it do its thing. Make sure it's got full contact. Nice hot pan. And we're not cooking it for long. These have been in, I don't know, about 60 seconds. I'd go another 30 seconds. You're looking at 90 seconds on a hot pan. Then we're gonna flip. It's me, I'm the one cooking scallops. <laughs> so look, you can see the scallops like 40% cooked. We want to do 80% of the cooking on that side. All of those caramel flavors, the colors, all the cooking is happening here, yeah? Right, so it's been 90 seconds, flip. Another 30, let them do their thing. Now I know the chefs are like, put some butter in that pan, nappe them, baste them. For this dish, it doesn't need it. We just want a really delicious scallop. Right, let's get them out. Just like Have a bit of blanched choy sum. So this is like a Chinese broccoli in the same pan. 
just for some greens. Just for really right? I'm gonna do a little cheeky. I'm just gonna pinch a bit, bit of this oil. Go in with the choice of. I'm going to go in with some lime juice. That brings the temp down in our pan, right? Little toss. I'm going to go with a splash of Shaoxing. If you can't get Shaoxing, use sherry or a dry white wine. Just want a little something extra. Right, now this is done. Pan goes off. Take a few of these greens and we're just going to dress the plate up. Nothing fancy, fancy. Nice. Then, the chilli sauce has taken us the whole time. Just going to plump this chilli sauce about. Chili sauce on. Just gonna go with some coriander. And then I'm gonna give it a little splash. Bosh! Finished. And that's it. Scallops, chili oil, shousing rice wine choy some, some coriander, some lime juice. A little something special. Now we get to eat it. Sometimes you just don't have to talk. If I'm gonna talk about it, the scallops cook perfectly. There's like acidity from where we dress the choy sum. There's a heatness that hits you after. I'm getting all types of like aromatic flavors. Down the hatch. Real boy. Do you know what, yeah? That fucking slaps. Like, no joke thing, this is fucking... Gordon ain't sending that back. No way. How often do you get to eat scallops for breakfast? Thanks for watching, guys. Um, like, share, subscribe. Make it, don't make it. Do what you want. But, if I were you, and you wanted something a little bit special, this is the one I'd go for. Eat this before I eat it all.